All right, folks. In today's 11 Gallery ATV episode, we are going to continue on tearing down this YFZ 450. And yeah, we're going to get the flywheel out. We're going to continue on with where we left off from last episode. If you want to go back and watch the last episode, we started, we ended with, we were uh, starting to take the flywheel off. So yeah, we got these gears out right here and with these little roller bearings that we put back inside to prevent us from losing them. And now we're going to continue on with uh, this flywheel holder that I have right here. And we're going to hook it up, get the flywheel off, continue on. And we're going to get the radiator out. We're going to get the oil tank out. We're going to get the steering stem out as well. We're going to get a whole bunch of stuff out. We're going to get the motor out of the frame. Yeah, we're going to continue on and we're going to bust this thing down. And we're going to be rebuilding every piece that we're tearing down here. We're going all the way down to the frame. We're going to get the frame out to the powder coater. And yeah, I got a cool paint scheme set up. We're going to get everything rebuilt and put back onto the frame once we get it back. And we're going to be shining everything up, cleaning everything up, painting as we need, ordering all brand new parts, OEM of course, we're not going Chinese anything on this build, nothing. Everything is gonna be uh, beautiful and done proper. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, and you wanna make sure that you subscribe and make sure that you uh, hit that all down there. Just click the all and a little bell so that whenever Levin Gallery ATV puts out the new episode, of this Yamaha YFZ 450 build, you will be notified. Yeah, so we're cruising right along and we're about ready to pop this motor out of here. All we need to do is uh, crack these motor mounts and we're gonna make it a little lighter. So we're gonna get rid of the flywheel and yeah, let's move on. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna tighten this guy up. Easier said than done, huh? Okay, and now that works out perfect because Check that out. It'll just sit right in there. And now we can just snag this baby with the impact and be done with it. It'll pop right off. 17 millimeter. Oh yeah, this guy's spinning. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I got a trick for this. We're going to put this gear back on there. And we're gonna take a penny and a pair of needle nose pliers. And then we're gonna stick that baby right there like so. And now we're gonna crank it and that will bind these gears up and the penny will not damage any of the teeth. And now we can hit it. And there you go. So there's a trick for you. Now we got a washer. We'll just leave that in there in case we need to do that again. I think we will because we're going to have to uh, use a puller here so to get this flywheel off. And I think we're going to have to do the same thing. So let's just leave that gear on there. And we got our penny and our needle nose pliers handy. And we'll leave this baby stuck right on there. All right, so this guy is a 33 millimeter with 1.5 thread pitch. And it is a uh, right-handed threads regular. And it's going to spin right onto here. So let's back this guy way the hell off. And then we can thread that on here. And then this guy threads up. And then it takes the same 17 millimeter as the, the flywheel bolt we had on there. And then you can see what happens. See, the gears are spinning again. So we will use our handy little trick. And there you go. That's all there is to that. And now we can back this out and undo this guy. And we can undo this guy. And there we are. One flywheel. 
And now we can get these guys back on out of there. And we got a Woodruff key. It doesn't want to come out, which is cool. And our Woodruff key looks pretty good. Nothing wrong with that. And the way this gear goes back on, of course, is this fat end's gonna be sticking out and the flat end is gonna go backwards. And man, that was it. Check it out. So see, something is strange. There we go. I think that was it. This thing was uh, locked up because I think the, the cam chain bound up somehow. I'm not really sure what could have happened there. There's nothing broken in here. A lot of sludge down there, and I can tell you this, this thing had uh, immaculate oil when I got it, so that means somebody tried to mask that. They must have never put oil in it, and then when it locked up, they quick added new oil and was like, that's not the problem, I don't understand what's happening. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I use brand new oil all the time. Once every six years. <laughs> so anyway, something... It's weird. This guy looks all right. All right, let's get this cam chain guide and the cam chain out of there. These babies are 10 millimeter. Nothing wrong with it. Ooh. Oh yeah. It is definitely the crank bearings. The crank itself. So it just, it just bound up on itself when I came back around. It caught right there. Oh yeah, they are. You can hear it. They're making uh, grinding noises, so that'll be that. So yeah, it bound up on itself right in there. And you can see, it looks kind of burnt. And when I'm cranking this thing too, you can just smell the burnt oil. So yeah, it spun the bearings for sure, man. Let's get the piston off of here and just uh, pull on the crank. Just <laughs> Let's pull on the crank. Uh, Peoples, you don't want to do that. Unless you're by yourself, of course. And um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, anyhow, let's get the piston off of here. All right, folks, check this out. Getting ready to take the piston off and getting the, the piston pin the wrist pin out of there the the clip that holds the thing in there is right in the gap and that is not where you want it basically you want the the uh, gap in the in the clip to be up here you want it to be opposite of this or or up here but you don't definitely don't want it on the gap you don't want gap to gap to gap so I don't know if that caused any problems or not but that's not cool. See if I can't get it to fly across the room. It 
It did not fly across the room, but I do not know where it went. All right, so here's our piston. It does not look super bad. And I've moved these rings all over the place, so who knows where they started out. They could be a, they could have been in a good place, but they don't seem to be in a good place right now. It doesn't look so bad. It doesn't really have any, any uh, top to bottom movement, but ooh, it locked up again. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, this crank is done, peoples. It just, uh, it just caught on the, there you go. See, it's caught right there. That is not supposed to turn the rest of it when you, the whole thing turns, see? The whole thing's supposed to be free. Like that, but you can feel it just catching on everything. So yeah, this crank is junk. All right, so we are in search of a crank. <laughs> we need a crank. <laughs> that sounds so crazy, man. Sounds like either gay or drug fiend. <laughs> I need a crank. <laughs> uh, anyway, I am neither one of those. So let's um, let's move on and. Get the motor mounts cracked. Well, actually, no, let's move over. Let's go over and uh, take the clutch side off and see what's going on inside of there. So far, this was all right over here. All right, now let's pull this clutch cover and see what we got going on inside of here. Well, they look halfway decent, but who knows? <laughs> so let's uh, let's crack the rest of this cover off. Aha! That guy. There we go. So we're looking pretty good in there, it looks like, kinda. Let's get the gasket out of there if we can. Ooh, it's coming. Man, if you just keep on coming off like that, I'll be so happy. Keep going, dude. Keep going. Keep going, yes. That doesn't happen very often. All right, folks. Next, we're gonna crack this guy right here, and we're gonna crack the counterbalancer, and then we're gonna crack the uh, the nut here on the crankshaft, and then we're gonna do the clutch. We'll do the clutch last. Uh, this is the way I feel comfortable doing it, because as you can see, they all kind of move together. In this case, it doesn't matter because our crank is junk. Look, check this out. <laughs> you can see it. Watch this. It stays up by itself. Look. It doesn't even fall down. That's how you know you have a bad crank bearing. That thing is st stuck right there. It'll go this way, but then it catches. It gets stuck right there. See, it's stuck right there. And you can get it to go, but man, this thing should be free. It's not. It is junk and burnt. Anyhow, um, let's move on. So yeah, first off, we're going to have to crack these guys. And they're Torx. It is a T30. So the reason why we're going in this order is because if we're going to crack this one first. We're going to need to use this, this gear. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the old penny trick again. We're going to throw the penny right in there, like so. And now we'll be able to crack these off.
Now this nut is a 22 millimeter, and well, first we're gonna have to crank down the the tab that's that's bent up there, and uh, yeah, let's get that done, and then we can uh, zip it off using our penny trick again. Let's move it so that it, we can go up with it. There we go. And then we'll just slide our penny in there again. And we'll zip that guy off with our 22. And there you go. And now what you want to do, I already know this, but we're going to note this for future, uh, for the future, is in order to align this guy, right there, there's a, there's a punch mark on each gear, and they line up together. So there's a punch mark in the groove on this one, and a tooth on this one, and the tooth goes in the groove with the punch mark. So we just want to make a note of that. And uh, yeah, let's get this baby off of there. And there's the washer. And the gear fits with the, the indent facing in. And this is where that uh, bracket goes that holds it on there, so. And now our counter balancer should just come out the other side. One thing at a time, one thing at a time, one thing at a time, one thing at a time. So, now, let's crack the crankshaft. Crack the crankshaft. And of course we're gonna do it the same way. And we need to bend this tab out, just like we did on the last one. There it goes. All right, so now we can do the same thing with our penny again. This nut is a 27, 27 millimeter. And then we'll put our penny right down in here again. And that will take care of that one. And obviously this goes with the fat side pointing down and this one has the tabs out. All right, now we can zip this clutch off of here and uh, we're gonna pop these in a crisscross pattern and we're gonna go in a few different stages here because you don't wanna just crank them out you want to relieve the pressure evenly. So we'll just loosen them up very gently in a couple of few different steps. And these take a 10 millimeter. All right, and now we can just pull all of these off And you can see it starts with a fiber, and there's also uh, this guy right here that you want to be uh, careful with. And it fits like this. And you want the concave to go in. All right, now with this one, this is not going to use the gears any longer. We're gonna to have to use a different tool to uh, remove this nut. This is a 30 millimeter, and it also has tabs, so we're gonna to have to bend that sucker up. All right, and now we're gonna use our Motion Pro clutch tool here and this guy 
let's see, since it goes this way, we're going to put this sucker on this direction. And it's gonna lodge right in there like so. And now we should be able to spin that nut off. And there you go, simple as that. And now there is a, that washer, and it looks like it has two tabs. So it goes like this and it fits on those two tabs that are in the, in the clutch inner. And sometimes, yep, there's a washer on the back, so make sure you get the washer on the back. And now our basket comes off. Wow, it looks pretty darn nice. There are no grooves in the fingers at all. This is tight. Man, this is a clean. It looks like somebody really didn't mess with this motor too much. All right, sorry folks for uh, having the, the uh, hope it wasn't too dark for you to see all that stuff. Um, I apologize, I forgot to turn the light on. It, how's that look? <laughs> Way better, huh? So next we can just remove these guys and they go, the indent goes in and this, uh, this little groove faces out. And then this guy, Wow, it's just tight on there. I wasn't expecting it to be that tight, that's crazy. But anyway, I'm quite sure that this only goes on one way uh, because it's gonna need to line up this punch mark right here with this other gear. I can see right here that this gear right here, or this, uh, this spline right here is a little lower and wider than the rest. So I'm guessing, yeah, look right there, there's a, a different one right there it looks like that it will go on this way there yep see it only goes on one way so that's cool that's a really tight fit too and it goes with the it goes with the indent in the back all right folks next let's get that counterbalancer out of there so it should just come right out There, it just needs to get to a certain spot, and then it just cranks right out. So it's got a little notch right here. And all you do is you just rotate the motor until it uh, allows it to come out. And that's all there is to that. All right, folks, check it out. Next, we're gonna remove all of this stuff that we can uh, so there's gonna be some eight millimeter bolts here and there's gonna be a couple tens. We got a couple tens here and then we got a couple Allen heads here and here. We got a couple of uh, snap rings. So yeah, let's go ahead and get the snap rings out first because they're always kind of a pain in the ass. Let's get this guy off of there. So what we're gonna do is we're going to just uh, snag it like this. And then you just spread it open see these are not they're in such a weird spot I got it halfway off and then it slipped out, of course. And then of course there's an airplane, cause why wouldn't there be? <laughs> when it's silent for hours and then when I turn the camera on, an airplane is like, hell yeah, dude, right now, quickie, hit the record button. Go, everybody launch. Everybody that makes noise, make it now. There we go. So that's how we do that. And then 
See, like I said, this one's a little more tricky because you can't get in there with this one. So I'm gonna have to use opposite kind of snap ring pliers and push them out instead of pulling them like they're supposed to be. So anyway, what we're gonna do, see these are not spreaders, these are compressors. So we're just gonna hit them like this. And then I'll open them up and try to pull them out. There, that one actually worked pretty good. <laughs> All right, now I don't really know what they hold on, but I'll get this guy. Okay, so this is just some kind of spinner, and it looks like it's uh, universal. Yeah, it's even beveled on both ends, so it looks like you can use it either way. All right. And then the other one was holding on this gear, which also has a washer, it looks like. Yes. So this washer. And the gear... Seems like all these gears have a common theme. All of the indents go in, face backwards. So always remember that when we're putting it together, that all these gears pretty much, uh, well, so far, all of them go back there. And the washer's in the front. All right, now let's just get rid of this, and I don't even know what it is. It has a bolt, so it's coming out. <laughs> Well, I don't really know what it's doing. Is it supposed to come off now? Oh, look at that. When I move the clutch, there's a ball bearing in there, which I didn't know. Let's snag that out of there before we lose that guy. And we'll do that with a magnet. I'm going to basically put this back in there. I don't really know what it is, and I don't want to lose one bolt. We'll put that in there for now. Yeah, let's snag this guy out of there. Well, there you go. Look at that. You don't want to lose this guy, apparently. All right, where should we start next? Let's, uh, let's start cranking the transmission apart first. Seems like it's over the top. Whoops. So we're going to loosen up these two 10 millimeters first. I'm not really sure how this comes apart, but let's get rid of this first with the O-ring. This is where the uh, oil line goes on, so let's just get rid of this guy and hang on to it. Well, let's get the oil pump out of there and see. So we're going to crack these 5 millimeter Allen heads. Alright, so the two gold ones go over here, and the silver one goes over here. That has some really clean oil, huh? So the gold one that goes there, and the gold one goes there, and the silver one goes over here, like so. Now let's see, I still haven't ever worked on this transmission before on a YF Z450, so I don't really know how that's, but what order we're supposed to take things out at, but it looks like maybe I could crack that one back there. So let's get this one out of there. That's the shift drum stopper. Let's get the shift drum stopper out of there. And it looks like, yep, the spring. And then the drum stopper arm the K and then maybe can we get lucky now and all this pull right out of there huh looks like I probably could have did that to begin with huh <laughs> all right well this is what we need anyway we need to put this guy into the 2005 over there so let's see how this is gonna work Doesn't look bad. All right.
right, now, okay, so it looks like this comes off of there. Oh yeah, it's one of those guys with uh, the two, with this stuff. And this guy, which I don't know which direction it faced, but we'll, we'll figure it out when we put it back together. I like to note it right now, but uh, if you don't know, you don't know. And now we got the shift return spring uh, bolt in here. We need to get rid of that guy. It looks like a 12. Yes, it is. All right. So this stuff goes like that, and then I see there's a washer. All right, so that looks like about it on this side, huh? There's really not much else that comes off of here besides that, and I don't know what it is or why it doesn't come off. Whatever it is, it just cut my fingernail. So it is freaking sharp. All right, folks, before we move on any farther in this motor, we're going to have to get some stuff out of here because it's going to get top-heavy when we pull the motor. And it might fall off the stand, and we don't want that. So... Let's start pulling some stuff off the front of here. It'll also give us more room. And uh, yeah, it has come off anyway. So, all right, we're gonna yank the oil tank first right here, bolt here, and a bolt over there, 10 millimeters. And then we're gonna pull the radiator, but we'll do the oil tank first. Little grommets. All right, so now this guy should just lift right on out of there. Simple as that. All right, so next we can pull the radiator and it looks like there's just four bolts holding it on. Uh, one here, one here, one here, and one here. And I've already hit the bottom ones with some uh, MPPL multi-purpose penetrant lube to get that corrosion off the bottom down there and it should be easier to crack it's been sitting for a while a couple things we need to do before we unhook the radiator though as long as it's secured in place let's get the clips off and um, the wiring and the hoses and stuff that are clipped to it so let's get those off we have one clip right here and there is just a little tab right here that you just push this right here and then this comes off and I'm gonna do it with a. Uh... There it goes. We'll just unhook that guy, get him out of the way. Then on this side, we have the same thing. We got a clip here. But we also have a wire secured into the, the guard here. Let's just get that out. And then we have a tube up here. We have a tube up here that just goes up and out. And then we have another, same thing as the other side. See, it just works like this. You push these in. And then we'll, uh, there it goes. All right, that should be all that's holding it on. So let's uh, go back up front and unhook this dog. All right, four bolts, let's get them out. with a little collar on there, or a little kind of a curved washer that goes over the top of the rubber. All right, now this guy comes right on out of there. And we got one more clip we got that we didn't realize was hooked on there. So let's figure out the easiest way to get that off of there. So it is a blue and a black clipped right here. Boom. So it's got a little clip right here that clips to the wiring harness. All right. Now we can come on out of there. Boom, that frees up a ton of space. All right, we're gonna get one more thing out of the front before we pull the motor. 
because it's uh, still a little top heavy and we're gonna have to slide this back a bit but we'll do some maneuvering but all this has to come out anyway so let's just get it done we're gonna get the steering stem out of there and yeah there's two bolts you can see on the bottom of the screen right now there's two bolts staring at us those two are gonna come out and then there's one at the very bottom and uh, we'll, we'll throw the lift up and put the camera down underneath there and take the bottom one out but first let's get these two out and these have a little uh, a whole extended clip back here like a washer that's uh, connected and they need to be bent over the tabs so let's get the tabs off the nut and of course this thing is tilted back just enough that it makes it really difficult to do this there that's plenty now let's get this guy All right, that's plenty. Now these look like 12s. All right, so this thing's got a plate and then a plate washer and the two bolts. Now we can move on to the bottom of it. The bottom of this uh, steering stem has a bolt, I mean, uh, a nut also. We can get that out. So yeah, here's the great thing about this lift. Check this out. We need to get to the bottom of that thing, make it easier on ourselves. Check this out. So yeah, check that out. Now we're up there. Ah yes, folks, check it out, the joy of the lift. Now we can see underneath and work uh, comfortably. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to move this nut and this clip, and I've never seen one of these clips before, that is strange. It's like curled around here and around there and back up through here, and I have no idea how that comes out, but we'll figure it out. It's gonna come out one way or another. <laughs> and then we gotta remove these tie rod ends. They just have normal cotter pins on them, so Let's just get those off first. Shove down through there. There we go. Now we just pull it out. Boom. Now hopefully the other one works just as good. There it is. Now I can pull it out from the back. All right. And now this clip. I do not know what the hell that is. Oh, well look at that. Well that was easier than the other ones. Now we can crack this guy. And it is a 22 millimeter. There. And there we go. These two are 17s. So let's get them babies cracked on out of there. Oh, that one worked. Yes. All right. Don't need a bigger extension. All right, now let's straighten it up and see if it comes on off of there. Ooh, here it comes. Boom! All right, so are those seized on there? Maybe we need to give these guys some slack and then they'll come off of there. But for right now, that's okay. We're just gonna leave that. We just want the steering stem out because we're onto the motor. We're not playing around with the front end yet. All right, folks, check this out. This is another cool thing about this stand. You're gonna want one. Look how high it is, for one thing. It's even out of the, it's out of the picture. <laughs> but watch this. We want to bring it back to life, bring it back down to reality. What's up? What? what? Boom. Now we're back down to the regular size again, and we can pull this uh, steering stem out real easy, and then we can put it back up if we feel like it. Sweet. So now, we should just be able to pick up on this guy and pull him right on out of there. Whew. 
and I think we're gonna get this powder coated. We're gonna test it, of course, to see if it's not bent, and if it's not bent, we're gonna get this a nice powder coated, and uh, yeah. All right, folks, now that we got all that crap out of there, uh, snaring stem's gone, radiator's gone, oil tank's gone. Look at that, we got plenty of room to work with here. I really can't see it, but you'll see it here in a second. But anyway, we're gonna correct the rest of these motor mounts and get that motor on out of there now. Yeah, and then we're gonna move on to a 2005, and uh, we're gonna use the shift shaft out of this one right here, and the other case half, and the cylinder, and the piston. <laughs> we're gonna use all kinds of stuff. We're gonna get that guy running, and we're gonna get new ones here. We're gonna get brand new case halves. Yeah, and a brand new cylinder. We're not playing around this time. We're OEM too. I'm not dicking around with any of that. Nothing, nothing but OEM this time. It's gonna cost, but this dog is gonna be wonderful. So anyway, let's get these motor mounts cracked. Get this thing up on out of here. And you wanna make sure that you subscribe for sure. Make sure that you subscribe. Make sure you ring that bell. Make sure you, uh, Click the all button, that is the bell icon. You don't really ring a bell. You can if you want to, but uh, I won't hear it. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, go ahead and uh, just subscribe and take care of it. And um, yeah, you get notified every time 11 Gallery ATV puts out new videos, you will get them in your inbox and you'll be able to keep up with this build. Uh, I apologize for it taking so long on this one, this next time, but we're gonna be cranking down into it. I had to make some money. I had to sell a few things, and I had to do a little bit of technology stuff. I'm a web developer, so I had to make some money and do some things, but we're back, and we're back for a while, so we're just going to get down into it. All right. So, first one we're going to do is the hardest one. Might as well get that out of the way. So let's crack the pivot bolt and hope it cracks. We got it soaking in the MPPL, multi-purpose penetrant lube. Hang on. It's been soaking in the MPPL, the multi-purpose penetrant lube. Freeze corroded parts. This stuff works wonders too. Way better than any other stuff I've used. It's uh, beautiful. So let's hope this guy cracks. I'm not even going to use an impact. We're going straight to the breaker bar. This is a 22 millimeter. Uh oh. Well, hmm, that's not sounding very good. The uh, 2005 cracked pretty nice. This one doesn't seem to like it. Might have to give it a little, uh... Hey, I think it moved. It did. Alright, well, it moved. <laughs> uh... Oh, there. Hey, it's getting better. All right, well, so far so good there. We're not out of the woods yet though. Now let's hope that it'll uh, not be seized into the motor and stuff like that, cause that sucks. Well, the washer's not seized in there. All right, so let's find something to uh, like a piece of wood or something so that we can crack it and not ruin these threads and mushroom them out. All right, so we're gonna try wood first. Looks like that fits in there, right like so. See if we can't get that thing to move. Hey, I think it moved already. That's a good sign, that means it's free. If I hit it with wood and it went through, cause it already went all the way up to the edge of the wood. That's cool. So what we're gonna do now I'm going to use a pivot bolt from a different machine, and I'm going to, uh... There we go, the pivot bolt is not seized. It moves. All right, now in order to go the rest of the way through, I'm gonna just keep using this other pivot bolt. We don't want it to go all the way through yet because we don't want this thing to drop, the swing arm to drop, because uh, we'll be a little back, a little, little heavy, and this thing will flop all over the place. But that is awesome. The swing arm bolt is not seized. Oh, I'm so happy about that. All right, let's move on to the other motor mounts and get those things cracked and figure out how, how to remove stuff without dropping them. All right, next we're gonna crack this bottom motor mount and this is a 14 millimeter. And once again, I'm bypassing the impact, going straight for the breaker bar. 
So let's see what we got here. Ooh, that doesn't sound good. Oh, there it goes. No break. No breaking. Ooh, it didn't break. Now we can use the impact the rest of the way on this. Uh, it does have a nut on the back, because we're going to have to hold on to that. But I came prepared for that. All right, now let's try that again, shall we? There you go. So there is a nut on the back. All right, then we got this guy. What do you think? Should we try it? Sure, sir. Why not? Last one didn't sound good, but we'll give it a shot. So now we're going to do this top motor mount here, or this front motor mount, actually, I guess is what it is. And once again, we're just going to use a breaker bar. Uh-oh. Okay. There it goes. Whew. All right, then we'll just hold it down here. And there we go. This one just cracks legs right on here like so. We'll have to look in the manual to see which direction these go. Because I'm thinking they should both go the same way. These were opposite of each other. Uh, maybe it doesn't matter. We'll, we'll find out. So this one's not factory, I don't believe. And I don't know what, I can't remember what size. I think that's a six millimeter hex, but I broke mine. So I got to use a Torx. And we're going to use a, uh, what is this, a 40? Yep, T40. So let's just get this guy out here too. This is a 12. All right, and now the other side, we just have this 12 millimeter left because we already took that one out with the Torx, uh, that six millimeter hex head a long time ago when we were doing other stuff. Uh, oh yeah, we needed to remove the flywheel and that guy was in the way. Let's get this guy out. Now the motor mounts are all out and the pivot bolt is the only thing holding this motor in right now. So yeah, let's get the motor out. We're going to have to balance it a little better on that stand once that motor comes out because right now it's a little tiny bit top heavy already. So I think we're going to have to come back to like right about here, back. We're going to have to take uh, this off the edge and pop the motor at the same time. Maybe we'll pull it back a little bit first, pop the motor off, see where we are, and then uh, reposition it as we see. And we'll have to crank this guy out. I'm not going to take it all the way out and have this drop. I'm just going to take it out of the so that it stays half in, half off. Let's see if we can't get that done. So we just need it to come off of the motor. Not yet. Nope. Oh. See, we're going to lose it once we do that. We're going to have to come back. Totally lighter than I realized without uh, all that crap on there. Man, it's still just on there a little bit. I don't see how. Can't be holding on by much, man. Let's see if we can't drop all this stuff on the ground. Uh-oh. That's not what I wanted to do. Oh, I know what the problem is. The other swing arm bolts in there, you moron. <laughs> Sometimes my brain lapses. What can I say? We need to go back in there, though. There we go. Now, this guy was holding the motor. <laughs> now, we should be able to come on out. 
Boom, look at that. And just like that. What are you going to do with this, sir? I don't know. I didn't look that far ahead. All right, folks. That's going to do it for this episode. Uh, we got the motor out. Man, we got the radiator out. We got all the front stuff out. We got the front. We got the steering stem out. Uh, we, we got more, more of the motor tore down. And uh, we're going to fix up both of these motors. The 2005 and the 2006, we're going to combine them into one and get it running. And then we'll come back to this build here and we will get everything rocking and rolling. But until then, you know what time it is. Peace out, Girl Scouts. Woo!